What you're looking at right here is a double set of audio mixers for OBS Studio, which unlock a plethora of new possibilities for controlling your audio system and your playback and your previewing and what your audience can hear versus what you can hear and probably even replaces voice meter and voice meter cables and all of that for a lot of people. This is the solution I've been waiting for for a very long time and I'm finally excited to show it to you in today's video. I'm Vox, the stream professor, and in today's video, we're talking about the audio monitor plugin from Exceldro, available on the OBS forums. It was released about a month ago, and I didn't quite see it yet. Exceldro has been putting out a ton of awesome plugins for OBS Studio, and I've been meaning to get together more, you know, top plugin lists and stuff so I can kind of show you them in a little bit of a rapid fire format, but I wanted to provide a kind of brief deep dive into this particular plugin because I think the potential that it has is so Cool. So this is the audio monitor plugin. I will have a link in the video description. And of course they have a ton of others that we will check out, uh, but you just download it and it comes with either an installer, an installer or an extraction option. And you just drop it in your OBS studio installation folder. I can cover that in a dedicated video. At this point, you should probably know how to install plugins. But once you have the plugin and launch OBS, you may see nothing different. You won't see anything like this. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. You'll just have your normal layout. I'm working on this weird uh, Pokemon Let's Play layout that I was doing for a separate video that hasn't quite panned out yet, but this is generally just OBS Studio. I have music playing through VLC, uh, playing to a dedicated audio device, which we'll talk about in a moment, because some of you may still want to install the cables portion of voice meter, but I don't think the rest of the software is needed. And a lot of you probably don't actually even need that because what I am playing this music to through VLC is actually my monitor's audio device because pretty much every monitor connected over DisplayPort or, v or VGA, <laughs> no, uh, HDMI registers an audio device of some sort with your graphics card and allows you to play sound to it. Now these specific monitors that I use do not actually include speakers, so I can send audio to it but unless I run the 3.5 millimeter audio out from the monitor, the audio doesn't go anywhere, which means I can't hear it, which is good if I want to route alert sounds that I don't want to hear myself or come through my speakers right now that would flood into my microphone or I want music for the stream and not for me. But if I want control over what I hear or how much I hear of it, this plugin is really helpful. So this plugin adds two primary features that you can use with it. First and foremost is the actual nomenclature, the audio monitor functionality, which you access by going to one of your audio devices here in your mixer. And I just have that monitor audio output set as a desktop audio device in OBS's audio settings. So it's a global device across all my scenes. Click the cog, go to filters. Under filters, I now click plus and click add audio monitor. And this allows you to send it to another device. So for example, right now it's sending it to my default device, which is coming through my speakers. If I turn it up here. Turn that back down. I am using the Go XLR in this case, but that isn't necessary for your setup here. You can control the volume of what you're actually hearing in your monitor. So for example, I can crank the device up. But then if I turn that slider down, it's still really quiet and vice versa. So you can control how much you want to hear of it. You can lock that volume for the other audio mixer we're going to talk about in a second and you can change that, but you can also choose a specific device you want to hear it to. So for example, I'm gonna choose the music device on my Go XLR. However, again, if you have a separate audio device you wish to route these things to, for example, I've had a lot of requests and comments for having two sets of audio outputs for a guest also being able to hear in headphones, you can route all of these to it. And what's great is you can actually do multiple of these. So if you wanna consolidate all of your audio sources for separate recordings, for example, you want a dedicated audio device that has your mic, your game sound, your alerts or well your system sound but not your alerts or music and then a separate one that has all of that for having different audio tracks in your recording based on the stream and what you want for youtube and then you have the flexibility of incorporating both i can sit here and on the same source i can say okay let me rename that and say this is for vod device and then i can sit which is like my monitor output number one and then i can add another one call this live device and send it to a second output and do the same thing. It's going to both. Pretty cool there. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove one of these and leave that. So that's the main functionality here of Audio Monitor, which is to give you more control over monitoring audio in a way that doesn't just go straight back to your stream for like a loop back or something like that. But there is something cooler as well. If you go to your audio mixer setting here, the docs, 
right click and you now have a new dock option, which is the audio monitor. Now, in order to customize where they lay out, like I have them here, you need to go to view docks and make sure lock UI is unchecked while you're moving them around. Now, if you right click uh, on the audio monitor section here, you can choose a vertical layout for this one, the or for the default audio mixer, the audio monitor one appears to only do uh, vertical in the first place. So you kind of want them to match. So like that, and then you can either, you know, have them side by side, or you can actually have them occupy the same section. And then you have a little tab that you just go between if you're worried about saving on uh, screen space. And I highly recommend you use this. And I'm going to show you a way to use it that's pretty powerful. But for the purpose of illustrating what's going on here, for now, we're going to have them side by side for the moment. So here we have two audio mixers that for the most part look identical, other than this one has an extra cog wheel and an extra, you know, meter here for you to see. And that is because I have all the things checked. If I uncheck everything available here, suddenly we just have that one meter. Now this is the meter that indicates the levels that are going to your ears. And that was controlled in the filter setting. So if I go to filter, if I turn this all the way down, you can see here those meters die off because that is just showing you the audio levels that you are sending to that secondary device. So in this new audio monitor with music playing to my desktop audio device going to my stream, I have one device listing because that's the only one I have added the filter to to go to my ears differently than how it goes to the stream. And here I have a separate volume slider that controls what I hear versus what the stream hears. Now what is supposed to happen here, and I believe this is currently bugged, but what is supposed to happen here is that when you click the cog icon and click meter output, then the bars that are shown represent what the stream hears. So for example, if you turn it down to the stream, it bottoms out. So you know what your stream hears regardless of what you hear. Cause you don't necessarily need a visual indicator of what you're hearing. You just need a visual indicator of what your stream hears. So you know comfortably that, you know, if I turn the stream sound back up, if I am adjusting my own personal volume here, I can still see that the stream is getting the appropriate levels. So my original interpretation of this bar and the out meter output functionality was that one meter was supposed to reflect your headphone monitoring volume or your monitoring volume, and the other was supposed to represent the actual stream volume. So if I turn this down, meter output also goes down. If I turn it off, it goes back up. However, I was mistaken on this. It is only able to show two modes. So with meter output checked, it is showing what is actually going to the stream based on your volume slider here, which is what I express later in terms of stacking these. And you can always see what your stream is seeing regardless of where your monitor is. However, if that's unchecked, then it's actually reflecting the just existing levels of the sound as it plays back. You also have only active, which will only show active audio devices that are available in the actual current mix. So that means if you have an audio device or a, a media source or something in another scene that isn't active in this scene and thus playing or in the previous scene during a transition, it will not be displayed here. However, if you leave this unchecked and then if we make another scene and we add a audio input capture, say my microphone here, now we have two different levels going here, but then if I switch scenes, it turns it off. And that is with only active checked. If I uncheck it, any audio device that is going to the monitor with the filter here. So if I go to filters, well, I have to see the device. Audio input device, filters, any device at all or audio source at all that has this checked and will therefore be monitored to this output device will still be monitored even if you don't see it, but with only active checked and only shows the ones that are present in the current scene. So then it hides it. I don't entirely like this functionality, but that's how it works. However, there's so many more options. So for example, we have output sliders. So this is really powerful if you're trying to save screen space and you want to stack these. You only want to use the audio monitor mixer, but you still want to be able to control some stuff. So this slider, again, is just for what I hear, but I can add the slider for what everyone else hears. Now, of course, this adds all of the other devices uh, running to your stream. So you will have those and that can get kind of overwhelming and confusing. But now you see here, I have two different sliders. And in fact, they are named volume output, which goes to the stream and then uh, volume VOD mixer, which is the filter that I added to go to my ears. So I can adjust this for me and adjust this one for the stream. Now, if I turn on meter output, 
it drops out because the stream has dropped out. What's cool here is you can also lock this. So for example, if you want to be able to control it, but you don't want to make the mistake of doing so, I can lock the slider that goes to my stream so that I have the flexibility to control what goes to my ears. But if I accidentally click over here, I'm not changing on the fly what my stream sees without a deliberate unlock and then change it, which is a very handy touch. Lastly, this plugin gives you the control to show different meters for specific audio devices or specific tracks themselves. So OBS in the audio setting or in the output settings here allows you to choose individual tracks for your stream, but also allows you to record up to six tracks. And you can kind of mix those to your desire. You can set separate bit rates for them. And as I've shown in my OBS masterclass uh, in the normal audio mixer, if you go to advanced audio properties, you have this whole routing table of which device goes to which track. Now, the audio monitor allows you to actually preview the output levels with these meters for each individual track. So for example, track one, I can click show and it's gonna show the meters for that track. Then I can go to track two and click show. It's gonna show the meters for that track. Of course, I have the same device routed to all of those different tracks, so it's gonna show the same. But then when you come down here to it, it'll actually populate with the individual devices for that track. So for example, I can preview just the music device on here and then I can actually control that a little bit here as well. And now that I muted the desktop audio device that's streaming to the live stream, all of those meters went silent except for the one that's weirdly bugged because the stream is no longer hearing things on either of those tracks. So there's a lot you can do with this plugin and a lot more creative stuff that you can, you know, approach with it. Uh, based on how you want to lay out your OBS and how fine-tuned control you want over your software. Again, you may need virtual cables specifically to get the most out of this for your setup. However, that depends on what you have available. For example, I do recommend leveraging whatever extra audio outputs you have on your system that you're not using, such as my, my monitor outputs that I was routing the music to there. Download links to this plugin will be in the description down below if you want to check it out for yourself.